Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. Thank you so much for joining me in this grand experiment called the Underground Railroad Project. Uh, the goal of the Underground Railroad Project is very simple. It's to be free. Um, I think all of us agree that freedom is a good thing, uh, for most of us anyway. I hope you agree with me. If you don't want freedom, then this might not be the place for you. Um, my whole life, that's all I really wanted. Uh, I don't necessarily care about uh, being rich or being famous or being powerful or having a lot of friends and all these other things. Uh, those things matter, absolutely. But uh, I think most importantly, I think all of us want to have the ability to control our own destiny. And so when I put together this project, which is going to be very informal, you're going to see me do videos that are just, you know, where I'm just really talking to you uh, directly and doing my best to share things with you that I hope will make your life better. Uh, the, the, runner, the Underground Railroad Project was really built in the spirit and the tradition of the first runaway slave. Now, if you think about the first runaway slave, you know, that's something we like to glamorize. We like to believe that if we were on the plantation, we'd be the first runaway slave. We wouldn't put up with slavery. We, we'd get away and do what we had to do and all that. And, and I mean, the reality is that you're probably lying. You know, the, the, the fact is that most people didn't have the courage to be that first runaway slave. Uh, the first runaway slave did not have a lot of friends on the plantation because hanging out with the first runaway slave was going to get you in trouble with the master. The first runaway slave had the unrealistic idea that black people could be free citizens and control their own destiny. The first runaway slave was probably told on by his, his or her friends. The first runaway slave received helpful advice from people who cared about him or her who told that person, look, why are you trying to do this? You're going to get us all killed. This is uh, madness. Just go take the job in the house with the master and you're going to be all right. But there was something inside that first runaway slave that led him or her to feel that, that they deserved a better life. That this life around them, that this reality around them would not be allowed to constrain the vision that they have for themselves and that they have for the people they love. That first runaway slave still was determined to find a way to freedom no matter what, even if it cost him his life. And... Let's be real about it. The first runaway slave probably did not find their way to freedom. The first runaway slave was probably caught and beaten. And, and when the first runaway slave came back to the plantation, beaten and bloody and, and within an inch of his life, there was always that Negro standing over him or her saying, oh, I told him, I told that Negro not to do that. He should have just went and worked in the house with me and Massa and I wouldn't have had to tell on him, but I shoot, I got to tell him because I don't want to get in trouble. Well, you know, I, I think that even though that first runaway slave didn't succeed, there's something beautiful about what that person tried to do. Uh, there's something um, that makes the first runaway slave really the greatest visionary on the plantation. The first runaway slave saw a vision that was not consistent with reality, but it was something that inspired other people to have a broader vision for their own lives later on down the road. Generations down the line, that spirit affected other people that that slave had never met, that that slave did not know. So ultimately, the first runaway slave laid the foundation for the eventual freedom that we would have as a people. And so you really can't have the first black president without the first runaway slave. So this, that's what we are. That's, that's what this project's all about. It's, it's basically about two things. One, um, I'm talking to the other runaway slaves. Uh, many of us we live lives that sometimes make us feel like we're trapped in a cage. You go to work and you hate your boss, you hate the job that you have because you get mistreated and, and there's no recourse for workplace discrimination. Maybe you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck and, and deep in debt and, 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 and begging and borrowing and doing things you don't want to do in order to pay the bills. Maybe you're tired of feeling like you're a second class citizen, that you somehow need other people to validate you in order for you to feel like a complete and whole human being. Well. That's what I'm trying to help you with. That's what I want to support you on. Look, I don't know all the answers. I don't know everything, but I know a few things. I've been teaching college uh, for about 20 years, since I was 22 years old. That was when I first taught my first college class. And to be honest with you, I was a horrible teacher that first semester. Um, but I've learned a few things along the way, and I want to share those things with you. So I'm talking to the other runaway slaves. 
Because number one, in order to be a runaway slave, first of all, you got to commit yourself to freedom. That means that you define your reality and nobody else defines it for you. That's the first thing that has to happen if you're going to be a runaway slave like me. And my goal is to get off of my own plantation. I don't know what your plantation is. Your plantation might be physical. It might be where you work. It might be the relationship you're in. It might be your financial situation. It might be in your psyche. It might be in your spirit. Whatever your plantation is. My goal is to be a version of Harriet Tubman to help you get off of that plantation because your freedom is not just financial. It goes far deeper than just how much money you have in your bank account. If that were the case, then we wouldn't have all these high paid slaves up in Hollywood with $200 million in the bank, but scared of their own shadow, scared to take a stand on anything because they're afraid of losing money. So I can tell you things about money and how to make money and financial stuff and all that. That's what I do. I've, I've taught finance for a long time, but it doesn't matter how liberated your bank account is if you only use finances as a way to become a higher paid slave than the one you were before. So in my mind, freedom is deeper than just that. It's not just a matter of committing yourself to freedom. It's a matter of knowing how to survive once you obtain that freedom. Because remember, when, the, when you did have that first runaway slave that was able to get off the plantation, that slave had some serious dilemmas. First question was, well, how am I going to eat every day? How am I going to um how am I going to buy clothes to wear every day? Well, where am I going to live? It's cold tonight and and I didn't like being with Massa, but Massa gave us food and clothes and a place to live. So, if you don't think that there are some people who actually enjoy being slaves, then you're out of your mind. There are a lot of people who are happy with slavery because Sometimes trading in your freedom gives you something that people value, which is security. So I can't sit here and pretend that your journey to liberation is going to be one where you're going to be as safe and as secure and as comfortable as you were before. It's very comfortable and cushy in the corner corporate office at the big white corporation or wherever it is that you want to work. I'm not hating on that. I'm not attacking that at all. But I think deep down, even when we get those big opportunities and we get this validation and we get this education. I know all those things. I got all of that. I got all the letters behind my name that made people feel like they're better than other people. I got, I've, I've done all of that stuff. I've made some money. I've done pretty much everything. I met a lot of people, done a lot of good stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're not free and you're not happy with your existence, then in my opinion, you have lost the game. So that's my goal. It's to share what I know, bring the other people to you who can talk uh, and, and just interact to do everything I can to help you get off of your plantation so that we as a community can move forward. Because the, the next step in the civil rights movement is going to require 21st century solutions to 21st century problems. We cannot solve the old problems with the same old solutions or we're going to get the same old results. That's what the Underground Railroad Project is all about. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Take care. God bless and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.